When I talked about St. George's Day yesterday, and I felt the way it was being observed by people wasn't exactly reflective of patriotism or England as best, a few commentators wondered why St. George is the English patron saint at all and pointed out why was he adopted. It's a reasonably good question. Now, the fact that he's foreign is, I don't feel it's a really big problem. St. George is the patron saint of a large number of countries, if you look him up, by the way. And you'll find patron saints of many countries who are foreign to them. As a, a piece of a trivia for the day, um, St. Patrick is the patron saint of Nigeria, something very few people realise. It came up in a stupid conversation. Um, I had a recently where somebody started moaning about the presence of Nigerians on St. Patrick's Day parade in Ireland, and I pointed out they were there because of that. <sighs> And they wouldn't believe me until I actually had to go and look it up. And they still gave in with great, with poor grace. And the reason he is, is because of the involvement of many sort of Irish people in educational systems there. But leaving that aside, this is the Order of the Garter. It was founded by Edward of England in 1348. I'm, I'm sure if you look at the flag in the middle, or the back, or the badge, to be more accurate, you'll notice it's the attributed arms of St. George. This marked the end, really, of St. Edmund's um, role as the patron saint of England and the culmination of the modern sort of role of St. George. But that had been an ongoing process for some time by, uh, this, by then. In 1199, King Richard adopted... St. George's banner as his own. Before that, it was St. Edmund. And St. Edmund, although there's not a lot known about him, was, as he's sometimes called, Edmund the Martyr, was King of East Anglia from about 1855 to his death. You'll notice that this sort of article on Wikipedia's skimpy on historical facts is not surprising. We're back at the the tail end of English history here. And sometimes it's very hard to separate facts or, or learn a lot. And you're going on rumour or popular legend. Um, he was basically famous for fighting against the Vikings alongside King Alfred, another figure I'm sure everyone's familiar with. And you've got the Great Heathen Army, which are a, a feature of this period, which I advise people to look up. If people are interested, I'll do a small presentation on them. This is the martyrdom of Edmund from the 12th century drawing of it, done in one of those great styles you find in medieval art, where they're quite interesting at times, that hugely elongated figure of Edmund um, underneath a tree. And you could, these figures are often great for decoding for symbolism. You can see the hand poking down there, presumably God. The tree itself can be viewed as symbolising in a roundabout way the crucifixion, or you could even view it as the tree from the Garden of Edom. You could attribute all sorts of meanings to it. And you've got these archers um, in that interesting style having a pop at poor old Edmund. Edmund was, by popular account, sort of captured, and they offered to share rule with him, give him riches, and he rejected it. That's a common theme in these sort of legends of martyrdom. A cult sprang up around him, which was became popular for a long time. This article tells you what is known about him, his accession and rule, and so on, and it tells you about his veneration. You've got a, the cult of Bury St. Edmunds, the cult of Toulouse, and then you've got Arundel Castle, where there are relics belonging to him. And you've got a background of that. And you've got a section on medieval hagiographies and legends. These are very popular in these sort of um, medieval ages. Some of them are, um, I'm, I'll read out a bit of this with the caveat that some of these legends are not exactly politically correct. Edmund's death, according to Alfred of Ensheim, King Edmund, against whom I have advanced, stood inside his hall and mindful of the saviour throughout his weapons, he wanted to match the example of Christ, 
who forbade Peter to win the cruel Jews with weapons. You'll find a lot of that kind of talk, um, anti-Semitism in medieval stuff. There are some rather interesting medieval legends, including one of a knight who punches a, a Jew out for in, insulting the Virgin. Uh, Lo, the impious one then bound Edmund and insulted him ignominiously and beat him with rods. And afterwards led the devout king to a firm living tree and tied him there with strong be bounds and beat him with whips. In between the whiplashes, Edmund called out with true belief in the Saviour Christ. Because of his belief, because he called to Christ to aid him, the heathens became furiously angry. He then shot spears at him, or arrows in that drawing again. As you can see, it's you have to kind of allow for a certain amount of unreliability with this stuff. Edmund's cult declined once Richard adopted the standard of George, and that's why George rose slowly in popularity to become the patron saint. Now, here's another figure that actually clusters around George, and shows how we get a cluster of saints with similar themes. This is the martyr Alexandria, the emperor's wife of Diocletian. She's also a saint in the Western churches, but this site seemed to have a bit more information on her. The holy empress Alexandra was the wife of Diocletian, 284-305. Her supposed death was described in the martyrdom of St. George. You'll notice that her um, supposed death because there's a question about whether this woman ever really existed. She falls into that category of early saints that may or may not. There is a legend that as George was dying himself, that she um, asked him about her own faith being insufficient to win her paradise so she hadn't been baptised, and George saying she would be baptised in her own blood. Um, whether any of this took place or it's just pious legend is, of course, another matter. And all three of these figures have loads of pious legends clustering around them. So if you want to go and look that up, you'll find loads of it. Here, back to St. Edmund's article, you can see there's a statue of St. Edmund's outside the St. Edmund's Church, Southwold. Must be quite an old statue, I would think. Edward's, Edmund's martyrdom on a wall painting at St. Andrew's Church, a diptych, and I would say other sort of artistic renditions of him. There's a load of these medieval saints who were hugely popular and had huge cults in their time that are now forgotten. So there's a quick answer to why is St. George now the patron saint instead of St. Edmund?